So epigenetics is the study of chemical modifications to DNA. These are not actually mutations. So these are not changes to the nucleotide sequence of a DNA strand, but chemical modifications to those nucleotides that affect how genes are transcribed and then, of course, later translated into proteins. In other words, epigenetics is an additional method that cells use to control the expression of genes. And one such type is the methylation of what are called CPG, where the P indicates the phosphate that connects a cytosine and a guanine molecule along the backbone of a DNA strand. So there are regions often upstream in the promoters of genes, where a transcription start site might be right there, these are called CPG islands, and that's referred to as an island because it's a collection of CPGs, CG dinucleotides, in one specific space in the promoter of a gene. And what can happen to these is that those cytosine molecules get methylated. So this methylation occurs on the C of CG dinucleotides, and I'm just going to denote methylation as asterisks. So you can think about those methyl groups, CH3, as sticking out of the DNA strand a little bit more than normal. And the way that this impacts gene expression is that if there's a transcription factor that's trying to bind this region of the promoter, it may physically be unable to recognize the DNA sequence it normally binds to which is down here in the DNA strand, because these methyl groups are sticking up out of the DNA and actually maybe physically prevent that transcription factor from binding and turning on transcription of the gene. So that's one type of epigenetic modification. Chemical modifications, additions just of methyl groups to cytosines in CPG islands can regulate gene expression. Now, it's not just modifications to DNA of chemical groups like methyl groups that can occur to cause regulation of gene expression change. Let's talk quickly about chromatin. We've talked about chromatin structure before. We have two different types. We've got euchromatin, which is open or accessible chromatin. It's loosely packed, and that's usually amenable to transcription because proteins can actually physically access the DNA that they're trying to regulate. Then we've got heterochromatin, which is a compact or closed DNA protein structure that is repressive to transcription. And chemical modifications, not to DNA in this sense, but to the proteins that make up the chromatin, the histones, can cause conversion of DNA between a euchromatin and a heterochromatin state. So if I drew out a nucleosome structure, for example, euchromatin might have two nucleosomes that are spaced far apart, whereas heterochromatin might have four nucleosomes that are more tightly packed. So normally DNA would be around, wound around each nucleosome, which is made up of eight histones. Each of those histones is a single protein. And the DNA winds around each set of eight histones, each nucleosome. Here's a euchromatic state. Here's what heterochromatin might look like, where the DNA is still wrapped around those histones, but it's much more compact and less friendly to transcription factors, RNA polymerase, and other proteins actually accessing and reading the DNA sequences when they're wound so tightly around these histone proteins. So chemical modifications to the histones, which can be methylation or acetylation with an acetyl group, can cause changes to the chromatin structure. And a lot of work over the last couple of decades has generated some broad patterns of how histone chemical modifications 
affect gene expression regulation. In general, trimethylation, where you put three methyl groups on a histone, is repressive. And what's activating is acetylation. In other words, this is repressive. One would predict that these histones have been trimethylated. And in active or euchromatic nucleosomes, there are probably acetyl groups that have been added to these nucleosomes. Now, I want to get a little bit more into detail about what exactly this methylation and acetylation looks like. So if I blow up a nucleosome, it's made up of, as I said, an octamer, eight different histones. There's histones H2A, and there are two of those. There are histones H2B, there are two of those. And there are histones H3, two of, and H4, two of. So we can't see the ones that are behind this ball. But there's H2A, H2B, H3, and H4. So here's another H2A, another H2B, and then the other H3 and H4 are behind this molecule. So there is a nucleosome. And each of these eight different histones is a protein, and they all have N termini and C termini. That is the amino end of the protein and the carboxy terminus of the protein. And so those tails all hang out of the nucleosome a little bit in terms of the structure. And these nucleosomes, especially the tails, have lots of lysine amino acids, which are known as K in the single letter terminology for amino acids. So there are lots of lysines or Ks on the tails of the histones. These lysines are where either methyl groups or acetyl groups get added. So it's these molecules, the amino acid lysine most often, where the epigenetic marks are left. And there are specific proteins in our cells that do the methylation and the acetylation processes. I'm going to focus on acetylation right now, but the same is true for methylation. There are enzymes called histone acetyltransferases, which transfer acetyl groups to histones. Those are abbreviated as HATs. So those are proteins that go around our cells and add acetyl groups to lysines on these histone tails. And that, again, results in open or euchromatic states. That's gene expression. So acetyl transferases essentially turn on gene expression. The opposite player is a histone deacetylase, a protein that takes off acetyl groups. And so those are called HDACs, histone deacetylase for short. And those remove acetyl groups from lysine tails. So that tends to work in concert with methyl transferases that add methyl groups. So if you wanted to go, for example, from an open conformation of chromatin to a closed conformation, you would use both deacetylases to remove the acetyl groups from lysine residues on histone tails. And you'd also have something like a methyl transferase that then goes on and adds methyl groups to those same tails. And that will change the chromatin structure and allow for a more repressive region of chromatin that will turn off gene expression. So one thing that I'd like you to think about for next class is what would happen if you had CPG island methylation of the histone acetyl transferase gene? What would that do globally on the chromosomes in a cell to gene expression? Would it be euchromatin or heterochromatin? Would it be generally on or generally off? And we'll talk about that in class.